I found some interesting information on soy I'd like to share with you today. Um, because when you do a search on soy, um, you're going to find all sorts of wonderful, positive things about it. It's very difficult to find anything negative on soy, but there is a lot of negative about soy. And so there is conflicting information out there. Now, when you have two facts that appear to oppose each other, creating this conflicting information, well, you can't have that happen. One of the facts is not a fact. And so what I want to do is I want to give you the other side of soy so you could just make a better decision on if you want to consume soy anymore. But the reason I'm talking about this is because soy is in 60% of our foods. So it is just widespread all over the place. And the soy eaten in, in Asia is very different than the soy eaten in other parts of the world, like America. I don't think Asians consume a lot of soy protein isolates or a lot of soy oil or vegetable textured protein or even consume the amount of soy milk that Americans drink. They typically tend to eat more fermented soy. But I found an interesting paper on soy that you really need to know about. I put the link down below, but I'm just going to summarize it, okay? First of all, you may already know that most of the soy is GMO, which means it has traces of glyphosate, which is an herbicide. And uh, a lot of the soy out there is processed with a solvent called hexane. And hexane is not a healthy thing. It's a very toxic uh, solvent. Also, soy is very high in omega-6. It's very inflammatory. Um, in 25 trials involving soy for menopausal women with hot flashes, it was demonstrated that there was no improvement in hot flashes. Yet how many millions of women are taking soy for hot flashes? And the other thing that's interesting about soy is that out of all the soy produced, 85% of it is split between soy meal and oil, soy oil. And out of the 80% that is soy meal, 98% of soy meal is used for animal feeds, okay? Cattle, pigs, and definitely chickens, which you eat. And there's not a lot of safety studies. And the type of soy meal that they're getting is not the fermented type soy that um, Asians consume. It is usually the byproducts of soy when they're making soy oil. And then we have 2% goes to humans. And out of the 20% of this 85%, okay, the oil version, we have 95% sold to humans and 5% uh, used in industrial type things. So it's in our dressings, it's in our all the processed foods. If you go to any fast food restaurant, they're typically going to use soy oil to fry your food in. So we have a very refined, processed, rancid, highly omega-6 inflammatory oil, which has some slight minor complications, like disrupting your intestinal border. Talking about all the little villi that are supposed to absorb nutrients, there's a report that shows that it creates atrophy of those little villi. And then there's a series of compounds in soy, okay? One compound in soy shows a lot of conflicting information. In some studies, it will show that it will decrease the risk of cancer. In other studies, it shows no change. Yet in other studies, it shows that it increases the risk of getting cancer and increasing the tumor size, which would make sense because it's very estrogenic. And the same compound shows hepatotoxicity. That's toxicity to your liver. Anti-thyroid activity, okay? So it, it shows the effect of blocking the conversion of T4 to T3, the active form of thyroid hormone. It even shows that it can block iodine. There's reproductive toxicity. There's endocrine disruption, so it messes with your hormones. Infertility, allergies, nephrotoxicity, that's toxicity to your kidneys. And even pancreatic hypertrophy, where your pancreas is enlarging. So you can see it creates a lot of problems. But why is soy so prevalent in our foods? Well, this is my opinion. Soy is one of the foods that they subsidize, okay? So the government will actually pay farmers to grow that product. And you also have corn, wheat, and many other products. But soy, as being a subsidized product, is at the top of the list. So the very reason why we started subsidizing crops is to help farmers during times of need. 
but now it's used as a regular thing for farmers. Did you realize that 85% of subsidized products go to 50 multi-billionaires, just 50 CEOs? So us as taxpayers fund the government, which then pays these farmers to grow this food that we really shouldn't be eating. So obviously, if you had a business that you could get the government to pay you for the raw material that then you can sell and make a profit, um, that would be a very profitable type venture. So I think it's very obvious to you why there's a huge push to get people to consume some of these products that are subsidized, like corn products, soy products, grains, and really turn these products into a healthy thing to consume. So there are some things you can do about this as a consumer, okay? Because if people buy these products less, then the market shifts to other products. So number one, you wanna be highly selective of what you order at a restaurant, okay? Uh, don't order the fried foods. Don't order foods with soy. But start asking restaurants, what do you use as your cooking oils, okay? And ask them, do you have other oils that are not corn, canola, soy, cottonseed oil? And start suggesting that they use olive oil, coconut oil, things like that. All right, number two, put more attention on reading labels and just don't buy any products that have soy ingredients. And number three, this is one of those really obvious things that might sound really simple, but start eating at home because you'd be surprised how many people have digestive problems and bloating, and they're just routinely going out to dinner, and they don't realize that the food that is served in restaurants are very high on these omega-6 fatty acids, and it's really hard to control your food. So just eating at home could be a therapy for your digestive system. And number four, you wanna balance out these, these fatty acids, start eating more omega-3 fats versus the omega-6. Now, on a positive note, if you wanna know the best foods to eat, I put that video up right here, check it out.